take a look at ABBV. Let's let's get into the individual stocks now. I really see very little reason to be owning the stock. This is one of the most bearish healthcare stocks out there. I mean, it is just ugly. I mean, it it, it can't even get to a retest of this downward trend line here. You have another trend line on top of that here where, I mean, it's 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 pretty bad too. So you got multiple downward trend lines dep depending on how far back you want to go on the chart. I actually traded this one point either last year or the year before, and I can't remember. It didn't it didn't kill me at all. I mean, I, I, I might have made a profit off of it, but if I didn't, if I took a loss, it wasn't a huge... Huge loss, um, but I, you, you couldn't pay me to, to trade this stock now. I mean, eventually, yeah, it'll probably bounce, but look at all this volume pouring in. It's it's gapping down. It's It's got a lot of people probably shorting it. You can see today it tried to rip higher. It's still being shorted. Don't play these kinds of stocks. They are just, they're just not worth it. Twitter, 41.84, it's trading at right now. I, I bought it earlier this month on July 9th. I, I bought it at 36.96, sold it at 37.75. I made like 2.1% off of it. it it's it, not, nothing spectacular. Of course, I'm never going to hold this thing through earnings. Sorry, just not going to. This thing could have easily been going down 10% today as it is going up 10%. There's just no way to predict the earnings. Don't play the earnings. It's a stupid game. Uh, here, I'm going to take this line off here and I'm just going to show you what, what naturally pops out. This inverse head and shoulders pattern, check it out. I mean, it's, it's, it's not bad. It, it confirmed it, broke above it. Um, you have a left shoulder, head, right shoulder pushing through it. I don't really know if there's a play right now. I think you have to be patient. You have to either let it consolidate at these highs here or, or come back some, maybe pull pull out a bull flag pattern. I, I don't see where you're going to be able to trade it right now. It's filled this gap finally going back to uh, July of last year. So that's a year-long gap that had been unfilled. Got filled today. That's pretty solid. So I don't, I don't see a reason to go ahead and chase this stock. I've traded this thing multiple times over the past year. Weekly chart looks a little bit better from a trading standpoint, but but even still, where are you going to put a stop loss there that's favorable? You're going to put it below 35.81. I mean, you're you're going to be risking what almost, you know, 15 15 plus percent there. Um, I, I I don't see I don't see a reason why you would want to do that. Yeah, the the weekly chart looks nice. You got this double bottom and everything. You got the breakout. I don't think you want to buy it right now. Look at this. You got some resistance here too. So if you get you get really excited about buying it, you got resistance at 46. Yeah, you're still making about 10% if you get in and it can go all the way up to that resistance level. But in the same sense, you're talking about having to use a stop loss of over 15%, you know, a logical stop loss of about 15%. So you're not even getting a full one-to-one -one, uh, return for the amount that you're risking on that trade. Don't do it. I mean, it's not about how much money can you make off a stock. It's about how much money you can make f versus the amount that you're having to risk to obtain that that profit. That's how you got to look at the stocks. Speaking of stocks that nobody really looks at the risk on, BYND. This is the weekly, obviously. There's not a lot of weeks to really look at. Obviously, it's going up. Obviously, I'm saying obviously a lot here. But nonetheless, yeah, if you're going to buy this one, you really had to buy it coming out of this coil. I thought about it. Probably should have. There's a lot of volume pouring in and there's there's earnings on, on Monday, right? This is like the perfect bull trap scenario for all these people who are, you know, who've got the whole FOMO thing going on. They're hearing all about the uh, the, the, the vegetable hamburgers. I don't even know why anybody would want to eat one of those things, right? However, everybody's piling in on it. They're they're trying to make their their buck, you know, their, their money. They're also thinking that man, if this thing's gonna have great earnings and it's going to be trading at 300, I guarantee you, if I logged on to stock twits or if I go to Twitter right now, people are talking about 300 after earnings. Definitely. Okay. The stock, the stock market is just not easy. Okay. You'll get them that, that do that every once in a while. Everybody knows about Beyond Meat right now. Everybody's piling into it. There is no reason for this thing to keep going higher at this point. Yeah, it, it may go up another 20, 30%, whatever. However, I'm talking about like the overall chart price action. The volatility is crazy in this thing. So I'm not flippantly throwing around 20 to 30%, but in order to make that 20 to 30%, you kind of have to risk about 20 to 30% of your capital. I mean, you get in at 230, where are you going to put a stop loss at? You're going to put it below this rising trend line here, which is currently at, at 170. You're going to risk $60 to the downside. That's, that's about 25% right there. It's not worth it. And with the earnings coming up on money, there's going to be a lot of people hoping to get rich off of this thing. And I have no idea where it, maybe it does go to 300. Just my experience of having done it for as many years as I've done it, this is a perfect bull trap scenario. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get a whole bunch of bag holders. And then people are going to be talking about, oh man, I still long on this stock from 230. And the thing's going to be trading at probably filling this gap right here down, not, not after earnings. It's not going 106 after earnings. 
But, I mean, I could see where at some point before the end of this year, it could definitely get down to that point. Sure. All right, you got your, your cell, cell phone carriers today. I know Timus and uh, T-Mobile, whatever, um, and Sprint, they're, they're merging. You pull up their charts. Both of them look fantastic. However, there's no trade set up here. You can't really do nothing with it. Um, T-Mobile, it, it's, it's breaking out higher. It's up 5%. I don't see any any way to really trade this stock here. You you have to wait for it to pull back to the trend line. Same thing with Sprint. Sprint there is really not even a trend line. Kind of. I guess you can connect these two points here. Wait for it to pull back to the 750 area. There you go. OBLN. Next. Facebook. It's been consolidating for two two plus weeks now. It's really not going anywhere. It's had its earnings. It's not gone anywhere. Uh, I still think it's a good bullish chart. I, I think from a long-term perspective, I think it's still pretty good. Um, you have some of that antitrust stuff coming up, but I think that's a long ways down the road before you know you start talking about breaking up some of these tech giants. And if it's going to happen to Facebook, it's going to happen to Alphabet. I think in the end, nobody's getting broken up. Trust me, they're they're not breaking them up. I think it I think it's good for political theater. It's it's not gonna. It's just not happening, guys. This Apple chart. I keep waiting for it to break out. Every day it looks like it's going to break out, and it doesn't. It's got earnings on the 30th, so I, I, I'm not going to go um, buying any any shares of it here ahead of ahead of earnings. But it, it's got this massive triangle pattern, and it, it just really wants to just consolidate right on top of it. I think the earnings is going to break it one way or the other. If I had to guess, probably to the upside. Man, I, I I don't even know if SQ and I are on on talking terms this month. It has been a it's been a love hate relation. Actually, it's been pretty much a hate relationship for for me and Square this month. I got in on it. Let's see, the seventeenth sold it for a 0.3 percent gain. Uh, got into it again the next day. Took a 2.8 percent over the course of a couple days on it. Got into it again on the 24th at 79.67 and. Uh, PayPal, they had their earnings. It was pushing Square down. The market was weak. I said, okay, there's there's a couple of heavy factors on the stock. I'm just going to go ahead and sell it for a, a small profit at the open and just find something that maybe has a little bit clear sailing. It's I'd be up about 3% or close to 3% on it right now, so that sucks. Shop's chart looks pretty good. I mean, it, it needs to balance. It needs to it needs to get a little bit of separation off of this trend line. Once it does, I mean, I think it could um, push through that 340 level, and maybe even go into the 350 or 360s. But back to Square. The, what I liked about this, right? And I know I get a lot of lines on it. You got this. You do have this resistance level at about 82.75, 83 dollars that you got to pay close attention to. So far, it's tried to test it today. Can't get through it. It tried to do it last week. Couldn't do it either. Um, but it's got this little short-term channel here. If I zoom in on it, you got this little short-term channel. It's it's holding it very well, very well. And uh, yesterday when I sold it, I thought, okay, we're probably gonna have a hard time rallying with PayPal earnings. Again, should have should have held it. Um, not not my best call. However, I still like the chart. It just needs to get through that 82.75. Also has earnings on 8.1, so there's no real reason to go buying it right now. But after earnings, if if the if the price is right, um, as Bob Barker would say. Jump back in it. And that's going to do it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Uh, Ryan at SharePointer.com. Also, I encourage you to check out the SharePointer Splash Zone. It's uh, great for room for swing traders. There's a lot of people, a lot of different experience levels. You've got really good expert traders in there. And you also have some beginner traders in there. So it's, it's a great hodgepodge of people. Um, and sometimes it seems like we get on the same length today. One person says, hey, I'm going to go buy deer. And I was already... Uh, getting ready to do that myself today. So I provide all my real-time trade alerts. I provide my um, my stop losses, target prices, the charts, the rationale for every trade. Anytime I update the stop loss, you find out anytime I sell a stock, you're going to know when I'm selling a stock. So really great place. I highly encourage you to try it out. You can get a free seven-day trial. It is really awesome place and a great community of traders. So take care. Have, enjoy your weekend. God bless. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel as well as check out some of these other cool videos that I've done. And if you want to swing trade with me each and every day, you can do so by going to www.shareplanner.com backslash splash zone. Thanks and happy trading.